Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today for a foundation wear test. I think back in July or early August, um, I did my last foundation wear test and I mentioned I had like three or four um, other foundations I wanted to wear tests on and I never got around to doing them. So today's the day and the one that I wanted to review the most because this sort of piqued my interest the most was um, this newish one from Revlon. So I picked this up probably back in July, um, probably. Um, but this is the Photo Finish Candid Foundation from Revlon. The reason why I wanted to try this is because historically I really like Revlon foundations. Um, out, out of like the drugstore foundations, they tend to work best on my skin type. So when I did see that this one came out and it was like 40% off, I was like, I'll pick it up, I'll give it a crack. So um, that's what I'm trying today. Now I have tried this before, but I don't think I've tried it for at least a month, maybe six weeks. And when I did try it, it was just casually. I didn't actually analyze how it wore. Um, I don't remember it being horrible. I don't remember it being fantastic, but um, today's the day we're gonna analyze it and see how it wears over 12 hours. Now, if you're new here, I'm gonna give a background to what my skin's like and how I like to do these wear tests. So essentially I'm 33 years old. Um, I have oily combination skin. So sort of the sides of my face, is the normal, but the middle part is quite oily. Um, it is currently the start of spring, so it's not too hot. So I don't have massive oil production right now, but at the same time, oils do break through. I like foundations that can control the oils a little bit and wear a long time without breaking apart. Um, I'm not necessarily fixated on matte foundations. Um, as long as they're foundations that last, I don't really care about the finish too much. I quite like a natural finish. Um, I don't mind a matte finish. I don't mind a hydrating finish as long as it doesn't break down and look oily on me. So um, yeah, I'm not too fussed about the finish. Another thing I like to look for is medium to higher like buildable coverage because I do have a bit of redness on my face and uneven texture. So I do like to be able to cover that without needing too much concealer. So that's what I look for. And when I do these foundation wear tests, I wear them for 12 hours. If I do need to to check in and touch up. I'll let you know and I'll touch up on camera. I'll show you why, I'll show you how it touches up, um, but I'll check in every few hours just to sort of show you how it's wearing. All right, now let's get on to sort of packaging and the claims of the foundation. I do quite like this packaging. It is a squeezy pump. So this part is not solid. Like if you compare it to Revlon Colorstay, it is uh, glass and you can pump it out. But if you want to get the rest of it out, like if there's any around the sides and you've finished it up, um, you need to actually open it up and sort of scrape it out with a little spatula or something. Whereas with this one, you can kind of squeeze it down and get as much, and you can get those um, like toothpaste squeezy tube squeezy things to get most product out of it, but it still has a pump. One thing I don't like about this is it seems like because of the packaging, they've reduced the volume that you get in here. So you get 22 mils or 0.75 fluid ounces. A normal standard foundation is 30 mils or one fluid ounce. So you are missing out on quite a bit of product here. And it is a bit cheaper, I think, than the normal Revlon foundations, but I still think it's not, I still would prefer 30 mils. I feel like 30 mils will get you sort of daily use a few months um, of use, whereas this you'll probably be replacing quite frequently. And I don't really like that. I won't talk about prices because in different countries it does vary. So I will just link a few places down below. Um, but uh, in Australia, Revlon's pretty pricey, but I always recommend people buying it on sale. I think I found this 40% off at Chemist Warehouse. Often they have 50% off and often at Priceline and other places you can get a uh, 40 to 50% off as well. So I never, ever, ever recommend buying these products full price because in Australia, they're far too expensive for drugstore, but stock up if you do like it while it's on sale because it's totally worth it when it's on sale. All right, so from the Revlon website, this says it's skin enhancing natural looking foundation, which delivers a flawless finish all day long as it hydrates. Now, now, it doesn't say what how long this is going to wear. It doesn't say 18 hours, 24 hours, but it says all day. So I'm not too sure what that means. It says you get a medium coverage that feels weightless and looks like your best skin. Um, I think the main draw card of this foundation is that it's supposed to look quite natural. So it's candid foundation, it's supposed to look natural. Um, and it also has anti-pollution, anti antioxidants, and anti-blue light ingredients to help protect your skin. So it's created without oils, parabens, phthalates, synthetic dyes, and harsh fragrances. And in the US, this is available in 31 shades. Now in Australia, this is available in, I think 16 shades. So not quite the 31. 
And then the claims on the Priceline website uh, go a little bit further. It says that it's a creamy texture that goes on like a moisturizer, then blends invisibly to even out skin tone weightlessly. So it also says it's supposed to keep the skin moisturized all day. And it says it's a medium buildable coverage with a natural finish. Now, when I did pick this up in store, I did actually pick the same color that my Revlon Colorstay is, which is 220 um, natural beige. This is one that I've repurchased time and time over the years. Um, and I know that this is a pretty good uh, match for my skin. I've got some bronzer and blush and stuff going on. So I look a little bit rosier than the bottle, but it definitely does work well on my skin tone. And I got the matching shade, which I think is a good match. So if you do know your shade in the Revlon Colorstay and you can find a comparable match in um, the Candid Foundation, it does actually match pretty well. All right, let's cut to me applying this just a little bit earlier this morning and um, then I'll check back throughout the day and let you know how it's wearing. All right, so it is 8.14. Um, we're gonna put this foundation on. Um, I'm using no primer as per usual because I really wanna see how that foundation wears on its own. I always think primer, I don't know. It sometimes messes with the foundation. Sometimes a foundation will wear well. It might be the primer, so I prefer to just do it over my skincare, which I've had on for about half an hour now. Um, and yeah, I think the shade, okay. On camera, my face looks really, really red and patchy and I do have little like red patchy bits. It's getting a bit better now that I've stopped using a lot of active skincare, which is a shame. But like, if I took a photo of myself now, like I'm gonna take a photo, I've got my phone here. If I take a photo of myself now, I'm not sure if you can see, I'll put this photo on the screen, but you can see that that's what my skin actually looks like in real life. For some reason, this camera just emphasizes every red dot and every red splodge, and it's really frustrating. But um, red patchiness and uneven sort of skin tone is a problem that I always like to cover, so I want this to cover it. So no primer, just skincare. We're going with a foundation and a sponge. This is the uh, Nakia Joy Cosmetics uh, black one, which has the sort of um, flat side. And this color is going to look a little bit funny on me because it does look like I've got a lot of redness, but it will match my neck. So um, this is my shade. It's just the shade that matches my neck. Um, and it really, get the hair out of there. And it really neutralizes um, the bit of redness that I do have in my cheeks, which I like. So all of a sudden that sort of looks like one color, whereas I look tomato with um, a sort of beige neck. Okay, the consistency of this, it's not super runny. Um, but it's also not thick and heavy, which is nice. It almost feels a little bit, I want to say gel-like. Um, it goes on quite wet and light, but um, it's a thicker formula. Like, as you can see, it, it doesn't drip, it doesn't run. With a sponge, it blends really nicely. Um, there's no patchiness, there's no streakiness. I am actually using this with a sponge today because I know that Revlon Colorstay, which is a foundation that I've loved for a long time, goes on streaky with a brush, and I know it's best with a sponge, so that's why I'm applying this one with a sponge. I do think that this one will apply better than Colorstay um, with a brush, because it's a little bit thicker, um, but I just wanted to go with what sort of I was comfortable with. I've just got half a pump here, because I do still have a little bit of patchiness, little dots coming through here, which is no big deal. I've got more redness around my nose that will peek through, so. I'm gonna just build that up a little bit, but this is building up really nicely. I think if you put one layer on, it's um, more of a medium coverage, but I think if you apply a little bit more in the areas that you sort of want it, it's more of a higher coverage, not like a high, high full coverage, um, because I can still see things peeking through, um, but it's definitely a nice amount of coverage if you like a nice amount of coverage. If you like less coverage, just put less on. Um, also, you could use sort of a buffing brush, apply one pump and sort of work it over the face. Um, but I think this is a nice amount. On a daily basis, I'll just stop at the two pumps that I put on originally. But if I was filming or going out, um, the extra half a pump just to sort of cover a little bit of redness um, worked a treat. And according to the camera, it has covered my redness really well. I look like a normal person again um, and it matches my neck really well. So this shade is a really good shade for me. When it comes to the finish, it feels like it's touch dry. Um, it's probably still drying a little bit, but it definitely does sit. It doesn't feel like it's transferring as I touch it. Uh, it doesn't feel creamy or um, oily or wet. It just feels like it's set, which is nice. It feels like normal skin. Um, it does have a bit of a sheen to it. So you can see it's not a matte finish on its own. I will powder this. 
um, because that's what I do. But I really like the fact that these foundations do set because it generally means that it, it will last a fairly long time, which is what I look for. So what I'll do now is I'll go off and do the rest of my makeup and I'll check back in and let you know what I think about this foundation with makeup over the top and whether I think it sort of matches the claims that it has made. All right, so we're back with full face and makeup on and these are just sort of project pan things with colored liner and this looks really, really nice. It doesn't, like I did powder it, but it doesn't look really heavy matte. Um, there's a bit of shine going on. I put no highlighter on and I made sure I used a matte blush. So if there's any shine coming through, I know it's either my oils or the foundation. So you can see it does have a natural like luminosity that um, the sort of setting powder that I used, which was a translucent sort of light sort of setting powder that didn't take away the luminosity, which is nice. The makeup did sit well on top of it. It doesn't look patchy. It doesn't look cakey. My skin doesn't feel dry, so it's definitely not a matte finish. So it does have that natural, possibly hydrating um, thing that it says that it's got. I don't feel like I've got a lot of foundation on. It feels quite um, natural. The finish looks natural. The feel is quite weightless. So tick, tick, tick. When it comes to the claim that it's got a creamy texture that applies like a moisturizer, I do think that's pretty fair. Like compared to the other foundations um, in the Revlon range, which are quite runny, um, this is definitely more of a moisturizer consistency and it blends really, really well. Like I said, I used it with a sponge. I didn't use it with a brush, but it just like blends really nicely on the skin. It did feel like it was like a nice sort of thicker, moisturizer and um, it does have a medium finish that's buildable, which I really like. Now I can't really verify the claims of the antioxidants, anti-pollution, anti-blue light because I can't, I can't do that. But the other claims seem pretty spot on. Now I don't know what all day wear means, we will see. But if this does wear really well, it is a very comfortable foundation and um, I really like the look of it on camera and off camera. So right now, this has probably been on for maybe about an hour and a half now. So um, it has started to like settle in and it's sort of working well with the skin, um, but we'll zoom in and have a quick look what it looks like. So close up, you can see that it's not emphasizing pores, but it's also not minimizing pores. It just looks sort of normal but it does sit quite well on the skin. Um, I did put a little bit of concealer under my eyes and I did set it with a bit of powder, but you can see there is still a lot of luminosity going on. So even though um, it's set and it feels nice and touch dry, um, there is some glow which isn't from anything illuminating because I'm using a matte blush and no highlighter. I do think that it might start to wear down around the nose. I found it quite hard to get it to stick right around the nose, but it's one of my oiliest spots and my chin will probably get oily pretty soon too. All right, so it is 12.04, so it is just under four hours of wear right now, and everything is looking as good as it did before. Maybe getting a little bit oily around the nose, um, but nothing too major, and everything is looking good. There's still a little bit of voluminosity in the skin. Um, nothing's breaking down just yet, but there is little bit of oil peeking through, but nothing extreme. All right, so it's been over three hours. It's 3.28 since the last check-in. So this is just over seven hours of wear. It's actually looking very good. It is getting a bit dewier. It's getting a little bit oilier. You can see the shine, see the shine. Um, particularly, like I said before, around the nose area, it's sort of extending the oil out. Forehead is pretty much normal. It's just around the nose and the chin that is getting a little bit oilier. Now it's not a problem. I think at the seven hour mark, this is fine. Um, but what I might do, I probably only have another two hours of light. So um, if I need to check in and touch up in the next couple of hours, I will do that. And then I'll probably check back at like the 12 hour mark. Um, with artificial lighting, but I might zoom in so you can just see how the oil is sort of progressing. So you can definitely see the oiliness sort of uh, happen around here, around there, but it's really not that bad. A bit on the chin, but for something that's not designed to be like an oil controlling foundation, this still looks really nice. It feels really comfortable. It's not like gross feeling. Um, my normal parts of my face just are still quite nice. So um, I'm, I'm still pretty happy with this as just an everyday foundation. All right, so it is 5.08. So this has been on for just shy of eight hours. Um, it's still looking pretty decent. Um, so it's still looking a little bit shiny. It's probably at the stage where I would 
like touch it up. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, if I was wearing this, like if I was going to work, putting this on probably an hour earlier than what I did today. Um, you know, by the end of the day, if this is what it looked like, it wouldn't be that bad. But if I was going somewhere later on, I want it to last a bit longer, I would powder it. So I don't think it needs a blot because there's not much oil coming through. It just needs to be sort of set a little bit more and it's not really breaking down too much which is nice it's just getting a little bit oily um some foundations which is like my pet peeve is so some foundations do actually break down and start to separate so where the oils are coming through you can see your skin and then the rest of the face you've got the foundation on and it just looks patchy and weird and because i do have redness underneath um it really looks obvious so this one doesn't do that which is fantastic but what i'm going to do is just take some maybelline fit me loose finishing powder um sorry revlon i don't have a revlon one to use and i'm just taking a little bit of that with my quartz beauty um what brush is this domed bronzer brush just a little bit and i'm just going to dust that just around the nose and the chin just to take away some of that shine and I, that has really refreshed it for me which is really nice i'll put a little bit just the excess on the brush on the rest of my face but um that doesn't look chunky or clumpy sometimes when you retouch your makeup it can look kind of chunky this actually looks quite nice so the lighting's pretty horrible but you can see that that has really patched up quite easily uh, it doesn't look like it's breaking down. Chin is looking good. So I'm liking this. I think it looks nice. You can see there that it doesn't look chunky and clumpy. There's nothing that's broken down. It was just getting a bit oily. There's still some natural shine in the skin. Um, it looks really pretty. So this will be my last check-in in natural lighting. I'll come back in about four hours time for the 12 hour check-in and uh, it will look a little bit worse. Like the lighting's pretty crap now because it's getting dark, um, but it will look worse with natural lighting. All right, I'm a bit of a potato. I was like, oh, I've got 20 minutes until I can check in and take this off. Then I realized, no, you didn't start it at 9.15. You started at 8.15. Um, so it is nearly nine o'clock. So I've had this on for close to 13 hours um, and I think it looks good. So yes, it started getting a little bit more glowy all over. The cheeks are getting a lot more oily. The forehead's getting more oily. It's still not breaking down. There is some redness around my nose where um, foundation's been removed, but that's because I had a snotty nose and I had to blow my nose. So um, this wear is a nice amount of wear. It's not breaking down. It's still looking healthy. It's not feeling greasy and uncomfortable and heavy. I really like this foundation. So on my oily skin, I really like how this wears. Um, it doesn't seem to oxidize, which is nice. It seems to stay the same color or close enough that it's not noticeable. It doesn't look different from my neck, which is really great. What I also particularly like about this is the natural finish. I think the sort of radiant finish is really, really pretty. Um, but having oily skin, generally, it radiant finishes or illuminating finishes don't work on me uh, it generally is a sign that my makeup's going to break down pretty fast and sort of melt off my skin and separate and be gross but this one didn't seem to do that i like it it's not too like if you touch it it's not like smearing too much so even though it is getting oily it's not breaking down um, so I give this a big tick. If you're someone that's got sort of oily skin and you want something that's not too matte or too heavy or too cakey, something that has a nice natural finish that looks a little bit glowy, um, has a nice amount of coverage, medium but buildable, I recommend this. My biggest downside with it is the 22 mils, but I can look past that because if I buy it 50% off, doesn't bother me. And I really like this for just a daily basis foundation. I don't like looking matte and cakey all the time. So this is a really nice one. So hopefully you enjoyed that. If you've tried this foundation, let me know what you think about it and what your skin type is. But um, yeah, it's really rare to find something with a sort of illuminating finish that lasts on oily skin. And this one, I dig. I like it. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.